I'm here to share an extraordinary opportunity that the Smithsonian Institutions extended to the video game industry. Think about this. Orville Wright wrote the Smithsonian in 1899 to ask for available material on flying machines. Four years later, Kitty Hawk changed the world. But the fundamental question is, how did two brothers with no formal education, working alone, solve the complex problems of flight that had bedeviled mankind for 2,000 years? And the answer is, we're never going to know. Nor will we ever know the true genesis of radio, or television, or film. Because the pioneers of those industries were long since gone before anyone thought to capture their stories. Video games influence social transformation. You know this. You practice this. The science behind games has created a fourth wave where game technologies are repurposed in education, in simulation, in aviation, and medicine, to name just a few. Video games are one of the reasons that smartphones exist, that computers are portable, that graphics are photorealistic, and that memory is cheap. So how do we prevent these kinds of important threads from becoming lost in the fabric of time? The Smithsonian has the answer. One of the greatest museums in the world agrees that the story behind the birth of video games is just too precious to lose. And it's committed to preserving the story for future generations. The Lemelson Center for the study of invention and innovation has already begun this exciting initiative to record the pioneers of the video game industry in their own words. Unlike film, radio, and television, most earlier creators of the video game industry are still alive, and they're able to tell their stories at a level of detail that informs not only how inventions are made, but the unique characteristics of the inventors who made them. The initial recordings have surpassed our wildest expectations. We've already uncovered so many things never heard or seen before in any published record. So you can understand why we're excited, and we're only just starting. The timing is right, but urgent. We've lost some important voices recently, including Ralph Baer, the father of the industry. But thankfully, most of the first generation pioneers are still here to tell their story. Through the Video Game Pioneers Archive, we hope to capture the hidden side of invention and to preserve it for future generations of researchers, historians, and the public. In doing so, we're preserving the essence of creation itself. By understanding the inventors and their inspirations, we believe it'll help us understand the nuances of what all inventors experience in the process of invention. Our leap into the unknown of recording the birth of an industry tells the unfiltered story from its roots. The effort's a landmark initiative in pointing the way beyond the archive. Our plans for technology history being recorded this way will influence technology history and the recording of others in the future. And beyond the archive alone, our plans include a television documentary series, books, publications, as well as virtual, permanent, and traveling exhibitions. The advisory group is unique, with industry luminaries contributing their time and expertise in conjunction with others from competitive museums, otherwise competitive museums, who've all agreed to work together for the common good here because of the importance of the work. So I can talk about this all day, but let me show you a small piece of what we've been able to achieve so far. It was 12 seconds that changed the world. How did the Wright brothers make it happen? Thomas Edison, how many failures before there was light? My name is Steve Russell. I'm Don Dagla. My name is Brenda Laurel. I'm Peter Sampson. My name is Richard Garriott. For the first time, we follow the birth of an industry. What went right, what went wrong. 
in the unfiltered words of its pioneers. Some people will say this spawned the computer game industry. The policy was that space war was absolutely the lowest priority. Why don't you do it? People will, for the first time, get to hear in depth what the inventors themselves thought, their own account of that story. There were many people who didn't see the value of video games, but it's rapidly grown to be the largest media industry of its type in the world in the shortest period of time. This giant of media and technology, larger than the film and music industries combined, will reflect on its humble beginnings. While there is still time, we did not have an ultimate goal. We can make those machines do things the hardware engineers never thought of. This woman is dangerous. Players who play the most modern one of my games can feel the roots that go all the way back to the beginning of the industry. We know now that a lot of people saw it. I was putting one foot in front of the other. We thought it was being taken away from us. I haven't given up. I now have a purpose. And they say, oh, you worked on that game. Oh, I love that game. This project isn't just about how people play games, but also what the games mean for a broader public. And hopefully our stories will inspire them to do something greater than we ever have. We tried to make sure that everything about the world was simulated. At first you felt special. People were going to say, I wish I'd know. Yeah. Usually what was going to be great after about a year of it, it's like, I feel like we're all here. The Video Game Pioneers Archive. Building the legacy into the future. So, a number of years ago, I was visiting Ralph Baer, who was a friend of mine. And we were sitting in his house doing something completely unrelated to games. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I've been interviewed a thousand times. No one's ever asked me the right questions. And I really thought about that. And I thought about what he meant by it. So we're trying to ask the right questions. We're counting on your stories, your ideas. We're counting upon your support to make this the legacy that it deserves to be, because this is our legacy. This is ultimately greater than any company in the games industry, any particular game, because you have to look out 100 years. What will they know about why certain things were done? I already told you, we don't know anything about the Wright brothers' ability to do what they did. It's a pretty critical loss. We're hoping to change that. We're hoping to give people the ultimate source material, which is to ask the right questions of the people who helped found this industry. And I urge you to support it in every way you can. Go to the website at the SI, look for things that you can contribute, whether they be stories, support in some way, and get involved, OK? Thank you. Again. Listen, I'll tell you one thing if you want. I'm happy to answer a few questions. If you have, because I'm, I'm low on time. Do you have any questions about, yeah? Hello, sorry. So I was just curious about who the p actual pioneers are. I mean, some are kind of obvious. You showed some. But I was just wondering how extensive that was and who you're kind of working with to come up with well, those lists. So the first answer is, is that the initial part of the archive, is, it's a relatively easy uh, test. And the reason is, is because we're only looking between 1960 and 1980 for the first part. There'll be other chapters. But the reason that it's critically important right now is, is we're losing the people from the 60s. You know, the, the fact that we were able to get the Space Wars guys was pretty impressive in and of itself, to get uh, more than one to participate. Because they, too, recognize that there's a legacy issue here. And they want people to understand what was really going on. Because the problem with history that I found is, is that because history is so anecdotal, we revere people we really don't know. We know so little about them. And what ends up happening is, is that these are, these are the stories of Camelot. 
right? Because making things is messy. And building video games companies is messy. And making anything is messy. But you know, the historians don't always talk about the mess. They always talk about, you know, the beauty. And they go on. And it's easy to be rhapsodic when you were never involved, right? Because it's easy to be an expert about something you really don't know anything about. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give people 100 years from now, 200 years from now, the ability to ask questions of those people who are founders. And the nice thing about the industry is, is that it's been pretty well sort of teased out who those people, who those relatively few people were who've really had something to do with the material aspect of this industry, how it started, the things that other people base their work on. So that's, that's the early answer. It's going to get more difficult as we go on, right? When we hit the 90s and then 2000s and then 2010, every decade it's going to get more and more difficult <clears throat> because people know more people and they're going to have more opinions. But right now, we're protected by, this, by the sense of really working with the true pioneers of the industry, and that's a relatively small group. Other questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>